This Halloween weekend, what really scares us? Why do some people frighten so easily while others love the tingle of fear creeping up their spine? Here to talk about the physiological and emotional sides of getting scared, our early show contributor and psychologist, Dr. Jennifer Hartstein, and also neurologist, Dr. Jonathan Fellis. Good morning to both of you. Good, Good morning. morning to you. John, I'm going to begin with you. What happens to the brain? What goes through the brain when fear kicks in? Well, it seems to really uh, trigger, we seem to be hardwired for this, uh, wanting to experience this surge of energy. It's an adrenaline rush, yeah. and uh, it probably involves the first reaction is uh, electrical. That's very quick. And then there's a, a chemical, uh, the second wave, of we process and try and associate why uh, that happened, and is it important, how will we react? And the third maybe be this hormonal, depending on how long the fear goes, almost like avoiding a car accident in those different stages you go through. A lot of stuff going on. Gentlemen, let me ask you, why do some people seek out these activities that will give them this rush and others say right. forget about it forget about it that. right well I think there is there's the brain component and then it develops into a personality component so certain people are those people who need that thrill who need that rush and how their brain works will implement the need for it more so there are definitely some people who seek out opportunities jobs experiences that are going to give them that adrenaline rush they need that to feel good to feel alive to feel really functional and that's those are the people that we need to do some of those jobs really because a lot of those are the people that protect us right. and jump in when we need them to. John, is this thrill seeker mentality distinctly a human thing? Do animals uh, yeah. have this as well? I, I think animals don't like to be scared. They, they're they're <laughs> hardwired to avoid fear and, and the threat, the fight or flight. But for yeah. us, it seems to be that we, we seem to have this need to exercise that primitive part of our mind and predict, try and forecast in the future, well, what would happen if I was in that situation? Mm -hmm. And then to feel that sense of accomplishment when you've come through it unscathed. There's a thrill seeking part of this and there's the frightened part of this mm -hmm. as well. Some people frightened very very easily at the sight of, of, of a fly right. or, or an ant or something like that. Some people are very stoic about it. Any reasons for that, why we're so different in that way? Well, we were talking about this earlier. You know, it comes into when our fear becomes so big that it becomes a phobia. And I think sometimes we have one bad experience, and especially when we're really small children, and then it becomes problematic later in life. And over time, if we don't get right back in, if you're bitten by a dog as a two-year-old, mm -hmm. you're going to develop a healthy fear of dogs. But if your mother keeps saying, don't touch that dog, don't touch that dog, it's going to become problematic and become more of a phobia so you really have to figure out how to work on that so that it doesn't interfere with everything in your life you can't avoid dogs forever uh, of course but I, I wonder Jonathan is, is a dose of fright now and then a healthy thing or can it be a it thing? seems to be a cathartic uh, it's it's a release it's a relief you know there's what we uh, expect going into it and then there's what we get and that scream probably represents the difference between what we expect and what we get and there is a relief you've conquered your fears you feel braver emboldened you're you've overcome uh, that, that, that experience. Do these things change as we get older? Or do, do we become more scared <laughs> as we get older or more, or more uh, I guess, accepting of things? Well, I, don't th I think that we do. You know, I think that some of the research shows that, especially for young adolescent boys, mm -hmm. you know, from 14 to maybe 20, they love that thrill. Teenagers, young adults love that thrill. They're learning how to navigate through that. As we get older, we've experienced a lot more. So the thrill becomes less exciting and also less intense. So mm -hmm. you're a little dulled to it. It doesn't have the same effect. I told John I don't like roller coasters anymore. You're a very nice answer. I'm looking for more sophisticated thrills. That's right. You're I appreciate trying for it. something less, uh, <laughs> not a one-off. Yeah. John Fellas, Jennifer Hodgstein. Thank you. Thank appreciate you. it. See you next time.